is going on, everybody? It is episode 11, How to Magic Find. Let's get into it. You just come over, you find a group of things that you can kill. Those are cold immunes. So, uh, I'm gonna go out here. Maybe there's some monsters. And then items drop. So, I got at that. So, I hope that was good. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. And, uh, yeah, have a great, have a great one. <laughs> Just kidding. What up? <laughs> what up? How you guys doing today? Wub, 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 wub. <laughs> How's it going? This is episode number 11, Magic Fine Mondays. And uh, today's a little bit of like guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always toying around uh, trying new things out with, uh, with the stream. Trying new things out with the Diablo dailies, all things like that. People said they wanted shorter guide videos, so there you go. If that's... Now they're going to be like, we want longer guide videos, you know, never can please the crowds. Um, but yeah, no, I, I want to, you know, constantly be experimenting and figure things out. It feels like Magic Find Mondays was was missing a little. Um, so, so I'm trying to just figure out what exactly, uh, you know, I want to do in that space. So I think that having... Um, I think that having a a nice mix of uh, of maybe guides thrown in with with you know watching other people find things and stuff like that might be fun. Um, we'll just have to we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. But yeah, so today a lot of people are always asking me in my chat. They say, "Mr. Llama, how do I match find?" That's the question they ask. Where do I magic find? And it's not always end game magic find. It's early level magic find as well. And I think that's a very important piece um, that that a lot of people uh, struggle with, right? They say, cool, I'm watching your magic finding Holy Grail source. Uh, she's level 98. She's got just about every single item in the game. She's stacked. She has 800% MF and can massacre everything. Cool. That doesn't help me out, right? Like, this is, it's way beyond the capacity of my character. I'm just trying to find anything basic, a Shaco, or what do I do, you know? Um, so, I want to kind of address those questions here uh, with this guide a little bit. So, with that being said, let me, uh, oops, wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong one. There we go. There we go. Let me jump in on this right here. Make the camera smaller. There you go. Smaller camera. Jeez. Rude chat is rude. Rude chat is rude. Um, sorry, Max is not back. I, I, yeah, no. I apologize for that. But I want to jump in here um, and, and throw out a few things. So the first one... The first one is let's talk a little bit about magic find sets. Magic find. Well, let, let's go right to here first. Okay. Let's start out. Uh, and before we even hop into this exactly, I want to just talk in a very broad sense. Um, magic finding, there's a difference between uh, like a base of an item and what an item rolls um i guess what i mean to say is you have to think of things like when a crystal sword draw that's a bad example when a phase blade drops it can drop as it will pick that item first so increasing your magic find is not going to increase um anything else behind the scenes with that right like that's not going to increase the number of phase blades that drop 
or let's say sacred armors, right? Tyrael's Might is a sacred armor. If I have a billion magic find, my chances of finding a sacred armor are still the exact, um, exact same, okay? So know that, that the base of an item, sacred armor, phase blade, breastplate, whatever, is not determined at all by magic find. That is done by rolls of, we'll go into that stuff later, okay? That's for another stream um, to discuss how all of that is chosen. Magic find is purely just based on once you have that item, is it going to be white? Is it going to be blue? Is it going to be yellow, green, right? That is what's going to be increasing the item quality, we could say. So with that, let's take a look at this chart. So this is a very important chart that a lot of people don't, um, don't know, okay? This is what a lot of people don't always uh, know. They will... Um, they, they 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 think that more magic find is always better or they think that more magic find is worse and there's an ideal spot for it whatever let me tell you right now any there, there used to be bugs that were multiple bugs one was you could find like all sets and uniques when you got magic find to a certain percent another one was that it actually like made you find more magic items when you got higher percent all those things are fixed it is now just on this scale right here finger gun in it um this scale right here is exactly what it is okay so what we have right here is on the left side we have your magic find uh that is effective so what it actually ends up being and on the bottom we have your total mf so if i'm wearing 400 percent magic find we're going to look at the bottom of this graph that says 400 and basically draw a line straight up. And wherever all those intersection points are, whatever's going to be on the left side is um, going to be what the actual magic find is for each kind of item. Okay? So you have your, blue, your magic items, which are blue, your rare items, which are yellow, your set items, which are green, and your brown tan items which are which are the brown tan co whatever right um, those are your unique items so look at how each of these rolls <sighs> teaching how to read a graph that's right thank you patrick um I, i'm just saying look at this and you will note that everything does increase as you have more magic find but it's going to decrease I mean, it drops off heavily with the exception of blue, which always continues on a linear scale. Okay. So unique is is what a lot of people like to look at. Unique set, right? Eh, rare too as well. But they all have a very similar curve, similar idea. Um, so I want you to just note, if I go from zero magic find and I get 200 magic find, <sighs> look at what that Fresh does. Meat. Thank you, Patrick and Lord. Look at what that does to my magic find, my effective on the left side. So if I am just wearing 200 magic find, I have over 100% increased magic find to my uniques, 150% roughly to my sets and my rares, right? You can see that's a decent chunk. Now, <sighs> fresh meat. And sure, you know. So looking at that straight line. Oh my gosh, you can't if have If I have 500. I got to mute that. Um <laughs> um well if i if i have uh 200 there and then let's say i go 200 to 400 which is adding another 200 on i'm only adding on about 50 percent more mf to my uniques and maybe a hundred percent to my sets and rares now let's go even further and let's go from 800 to a thousand all the way at the far end my unique chance goes up maybe 8%, 10%. I don't know exactly um, what it is. I could go look up the number if we wanted, but it's very little, right? So every, every single magic find is worth a little bit less. But what this should tell you is every single magic find that you piece of magic find that you get early on from the start is worth a lot more, right? So if I'm at 0% MF running around and I throw on 
20, 30% MF. That is a huge boost to my overall magic find, right? If at a thousand magic find of gear, I have 200% effective MF for unique items, half of that is at 180, it looks like. So from 0 to 180 is the same as from 180 to 1,000. That is how significant early magic find is. So when you are going for that early MF, if you're trying to find some early items, just getting a few pieces on you that will have some magic find is super helpful. Okay, Just getting even some basic stuff. So... With that being said, you might say, oh, well, what are some basic things? What are some things I can do? Uh, whatever, right? Well, here's some very easy set items. And these are set items right here. Um, but here's some very easy ones that you can look at. We have Arctics, right? You just get the belt and one other piece. Saigons, the boots, plus a couple other pieces, which the Saigon sets can actually be kind of nice because they'll throw some resin there and life and whatever. Angelics uh, can be all right if you you know if you want to get run three pieces or something or the full, um, and then uh, the my favorite. I mean, yeah, you can read obviously, so you can see what they are. My favorite though is Tancred's amulet plus one other item, and usually I run Tancred's boots. Okay. Amulet plus boots. It's not taking really crazy necessary parts of your character, and you get 78% magic find. Okay. You get you get 78%. That's a huge amount of magic find for a couple pieces. Um, and so, you know, that's probably my favorite one. It's really easy to get, really easy to just put on there, and it's it's fantastic. Uh, and the way that I guess I can go back really fast here, the way that this kind of works when we're looking at our magic finding graphs right here is a lot of people sometimes say, oh, okay, so I have 100% magic find, so I should find 100% of unique items. Why isn't that working? Um, what it's doing is it's giving you a 100% more on top of what the percentage is now. So if a monster has a 1% chance to find to drop a unique item, now it has a 2% chance if you have 100% magic find. Or, you know, so it's doubling it, right? So 200% would mean you're tripling it, okay? So you're not, the, the chances aren't going up crazy amounts, but that is still helpful. It is, it is going to be helping a lot, right? Mmm, um, data, I know, right? I love data. Data is so great. So I don't want to get too stuck in the weeds with all this stuff, right? But I just wanted to clear that up a little bit for stuff to look at. So this is not my Holy Grail source. This is actually um, one of the first characters. And yeah, I'll, I'll hop over to that character as well, my Holy Grail, to kind of go through some other ideas. But I want to go through some basic, um, kind of some basics right now that are very simple and easy of... I have a character, and this is going to be a character, not a sorceress exactly. Uh, what exactly am I wearing? What am I looking for? What am I do? You know, all of that stuff. So this right here, this character is probably more along what you would, what you might have, right? A lot of people aren't going to have all the gear that my um, Holy Grail source has, but if you can find yourself some really easy things, right? A Shaco. This is one of your best magic finding helmets. Uh, super simple, 50 MF. Gives you good stats, skills, life, right? All these things. And I don't want to go too much through all the crazy gear. Hodo, you know, lid list, right? You're just kind of looking for some basic things um, to use to kind of start out, right? And you can see the triple towels. Gets me some faster cast rate. Gets me some magic find as well. Um, Tal's armor, obviously. It's a little harder to find, but that's going to get it for you. But what I want to really show with this character... Didn't even put Topaz in it. I know, what a failure. Uh, single player. What I want to show with this character is early... Um, 
early uh, just whatever areas, right? So I'm in hell, but I mean, I'll, we can take this character back if we want to. Uh, let's go all the way back to normal. Okay, let's go back to normal. So the first things, my weapons over overlay isn't working. Uh, oh, I can start that for you. I mean, that's not a big deal for right now, but I'll start it anyways. Um, so let's let's kind of just look through in normal. First things first, Black Marsh Tower, right? This is going to be a critical place to start out and get yourself some runes. There's my tower, right? It's very easy. You can do start start the tower at level six. You can do tower with any character in normal. And of course, you are going to be dropping runes from L rune all the way up to Ral rune in the tower. Okay. So f with that, and she'll be dropping multiple runes as well sometimes. So she'll drop from zero to technically six runes. But, you know, it doesn't always have to be six. But, I mean, look at that. I got Tal, Tier, Tal. Easy, right? What am I getting from this? Because I'm not really getting MF items, per se. But, I'm getting items like Stealth. Um, right? Tal, Eth. I'm getting, I'm getting items like Leaf. I'm getting Rao runes for resistances. I'm getting Tier runes for mana per kill. Um, it gives you a lot of early game survivability so you can move forward to have stuff to go magic find with and if you note a lot of my characters uh which i've removed most of them most of them all right never mind i don't have one with the stealth if you know i'll note a lot of my characters you'll see that i have um stealth on them and i can carry that all the way through hell right and so you can get that to farm anywhere you want it's not just about having MF percent. It's also about speed killing. Exactly that, man. It's about being able to kill things quickly. So, areas in level one. You're going to farm Black Marsh, potentially. And you could farm him in Dario here if you want. There's not really a lot of great stuff there, though. I would say better better off. The first place I would really start MFing is uh, Mephisto, right? Mephisto, in every act, has a pretty decent... Lot, loot table okay in every act he has pretty good loot table nothing good there um, and, and so he is worth farming if you want to farm for kind of a basic uh, stuff but even still you're probably going to be able to get through there you're probably going to get through here um, and you'll probably get to act 5 you can farm bail runs early Bale is a great person as well for killing. Uh, Diablo and Bale both have extremely high levels. I believe normal Bale is level 60, which is very high for normal. Um, so he also has a very good loot table. You can drop things like Titans and stuff off him. But the issue with farming Bale is it's very slow, right? It's going to take a long time for you to get all the way to Bale just to kill Bale because you have to go through all of his minions and stuff like that. So while it's great to get that experience with him, I would say your best place to actually start farming in this game, besides, once again, the tower. Tower is, once again, a fantastic, fantastic place to get lots of runes. You can get all the way up to Io Rune and Nightmare, um, which gives you a whole slew of things. You can make a white wand out of that stuff. You can make lore helms. You can make... Uh, I mean, just a lot. And you can even, you know, obviously morph a couple of runes up if you need. You can make a lot of low-level rune words off of this that are very good for survivability. But, um, and Dariel is probably one of the best places to start. And she's going to start introducing things like SOJs and, and uh, you know, and, and some other items along those lines, right? I don't farm Nightmare and Dariel that much. But she starts to bring in a few more items that you can farm pretty rapidly. Once again, we're getting to kind of whatever areas, and bam, we are once again at one of the best areas to farm right here, which is Nightmare. Oh, we got a big map. Nightmare Mephisto. And you're going to see that Mephisto in every single act can be very good to farm, okay? 
Mephisto is very strong to farm. If you want to farm, also let me go here, right? I'll show you the easiest way to farm Mephisto. Right here. This is all you do. You can do this with bows. You can do this with javelins. You can do this with a lot of sorceress skills. You can do this with traps. You can do, right. There are so many ways you can do this. The only thing you have to do is grab them, drag them down here. You wanna have killed these guys so that he doesn't bug you. And he'll also heal Mephisto, so you have to just make sure he's dead. And then you come out here and you cast whatever spell you need for a lot of cheese there, right? Very simple, easy, um, great ways to uh, deal with Mephisto. So this is why, I'd say this is also why Mephisto is one of the best people to spawn. One, he is, um, he is the, I would say the best drop table in the game based on the ease of getting to him and killing him. Nah, eh, Pindle probably is. Pindle's probably the top. Me uh, Mephisto is probably the second in terms of ease of getting and killing a boss. And he will drop a lot of items. And, and the best thing to do, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, is adjust your player settings to really spice it up. So um, you just want to... Get there, farm him, and he will drop a lot of good stuff. Additionally, there are racks here, and there is a super chest behind him. And that, I believe, is also a super chest right there. You have weapon rack over here, armor rack this way, super chest behind, and sometimes a chest right here as well. So, you want to be... Um, you want to be constantly, you know, popping all those things as well. But Nightmare Mephisto is fantastic. He's he'll start dropping things. I believe he starts dropping things like Shaco, Viper Magi, um, Oculus. Maybe can that be a Nightmare? Or is that a Hell? I want to say it's a Nightmare Mephisto. Honestly, um, so many items are added in at Nightmare Mephisto. That. Let me. I just want to look really quickly. Boss nightmare. Uh, unique. Let me look for Oculus. Con. It's the Oculus. Find. Uh, yeah, Mephisto can drop it. Mephisto can drop the Oculus in Nightmare. So there's so so many items you name any any i mean I'm, I'm he can probably drop shaft stop as well you can probably drop i don't know if you can drop that um you know obviously you can drop a ton of good rings sojs and and stuff uh so 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 many items can be dropped at nightmare mephisto this is the place to go level up and not level up but gear up this is the place if you are stuck you need more magic fine you need to get better gear go do mephisto because you can cheese him he's not that hard to kill and, and dodge and you know, if he kills you a couple times whatever and he's going to be giving you tons of loot now once you've kind of exhausted nightmare mephisto right you might move your way up um you can start doing some and and travancle is also an okay place to farm if you would like. I've never really farmed Travancle a ton. Uh, in Hell I farm it sometimes, but not too much in Nightmare. Because they can be kind of dangerous, a little more dangerous than Mephistos. If I don't have the gear and stuff, then you know I can't cheese them very well. Um, but that's a place that you could be farming. But uh, you want to be moving forward. Chaos, Diablo, all right. Bale, once again, all right. These are really better experience places. Nightmare Bale is a fantastic place for experience. Farming some of these guys, some Shank or Eldritch, uh, can also be actually not terrible magic find. And they're very close, so there's, once again, easy running kills. Um, so I don't mind farming those guys either. But at that point, I'm usually pushing forward into hell, right? So at this point, you've farmed normal Mephisto somewhat. Um, 
but really you've gotten into you know nightmare mephisto i think that's your you really the place you want to get to and if you can't quite get there nightmare and dario if you can't quite get there then we're back to normal mephisto right um or normal bail to level up where we're strong enough to go to nightmare mephisto farming nightmare mephisto a ton moving forward getting our experience on nightmare bail bail runs are fantastic for that now we move into hell and hell is where you're really going to start branching out into your magic find so first i'm going to start with our basics one black marsh you can do tower runs you have to note that there are a lot more immunities now in hell and so a lot of people can't do tower runs right if you're a hammered in or whatever yeah you probably can do it all right if you have multiple damage sources you can probably get down there sometimes but not every character is going to be capable of doing hell um hell tower runs so just be aware of that bosses on the other hand don't have immunities right act bosses so any character can run them so this puts us once again back at the catacombs level two and the endurance of hate level two once again this is the same exact idea and i'm gonna see if i can what kind of map if we've got good map hey that is a good map right once again i can do the exact same stuff and i can even drag them in here if i want poke up see them and i can cheese them and i never had to take a single point of damage i never had to worry about getting hit i'm a blizz frozen orb source on this character so that's why my damage is so low but i just sit there and i cheese them and even if my character look at this character she has 10 points of blizzard total she's got one point so it's one 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 with plus nine here and remember these synergies don't count towards blizzard right now and then cold mastery is you know max but one point in blizzard or 10 points with nine soft and one of each synergy and i can still sit there and whittle down mephisto right i could be level 50 right now level 40 right now and i could have more blizzard damage and just be knocking out um mephisto still even if it takes a little bit longer i can sit here like this and i can do this and mephisto as i've said before has fantastic drops one of the best drop tables in the game at every single stage normal especially nightmare and then especially hell once again mephisto's dropping a ton of items because he's monster level uh what is it 87 i believe is his monster level so from a leveling standpoint early level standpoint he can drop every single item in the game the only issue is tc drops which once again i said we'll talk about that in another guide and so that's just some bases can't drop here like sacred armors you know your your big tc your big items aren't going to drop here but anything below that line of big items he is going to be dropping now ah uh, dang it i didn't mean to kill him before you kill a monster especially like mephisto you have the ability to gear swap okay so right now I'm obviously using, and let me see if I have any good gear for swapping, but we can just pretend like he hasn't died yet. Okay, there we go. That's our that's our swap gear. Let me get rid of these things. So let's pretend like I needed to use these item, this item right here, right? I had to use my Viper Magi for my faster cast rate and my res and all that stuff. When I am attacking Mephisto, magic find is zero, zero, it doesn't matter. Literally means nothing except on the final kill what i have on when uh, he dies thank you rj when he dies what i am wearing is what's going to have an effect on what drops so right before he dies i go bam i cast my final blizzard he dies i now have a hundred and eight percent more magic find as you can see from this armor purely because of that okay that is I mean, I mean that and so you cannot just do this with armor this is why a lot of people have what they call their like magic find setup on switch such as what if you cast the blizzard before switching that's fine you can cast it before switching it's when he dies it does the check when he dies it does the check i am 95 percent sure 
It's that and not on the cast. So, um, with that, is 108 a lot? 108 is plenty. As we've, as we've talked about before, if I have 108 MF, that already brings me up to about 75% effective, unique magic find. That's a decent chunk, considering, uh, you know, 0 to 75 only takes... Oh, that's 50. Sorry. It's about 100... Oh, no, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. You know, so considering that scale, like I said, every early piece of magic find that you get does so much more than every late piece of magic find that you get. So if you don't have a lot of magic finds, switching on one item like this or your Shaco or even note right now, this is the 13. Let's pretend that I'm just on this character. I have 50% magic find. Okay, none there, none there, none there, none there. Nope. 80% and 93% magic find, right? Not counting. Let's pretend like my charms don't exist. Okay, I've got a G zip. Yeah, let's just pretend like the charms don't exist. I've got 93% magic find on this character right here. If I simply, right before I kill Mephisto, Go like this, which gives me 65 more, because you can see in the down in the tan, right, the set bonus, I get 65 more. So that's 98, 158, right? Is that right? 68, 50, math's hard, 158. Yeah, 158. And then I swap like this, 258, 266. So I have just, by pressing the W key and doing one armor swap, gone from 93% MF to 266 MF, whatever I said. Okay? Just with the simplest change of two buttons. And if we look at our fun graph, at 93%, MF, which is my number on the bottom graph right there, I probably have about 60 effective MF, 60 to 70 effective MF. At 266, I have about 120. So I'm literally doubling my unique's MF percent and even more so on my rares, sets, and then of course my magic, right, items. Even more so just by doing that right there. So that's going to like double the amount of unique items that I'm going to find. Okay. Purely from the simplest one swap there and a swap like that. Well, like that, right? So this is why it's really important to have that MF. This is this is going to take you down a ton. Your odds of item finding an item is going to go from 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 600, right? 1 in 5... One in 500, one in 400. It's going to be fantastic, and you want to be stacking this. But it can be dangerous. Like I say, uh, that can be dangerous. Yes, if you have a mercenary, your mercenary's match find only counts if he makes the kill and his stacks on top of your MF. So if he has another 100 and he kills, take your 266, add 100 to it, and it's 366% magic find. However, if he doesn't get the kill... His MF doesn't count. So, we now see... Oh, hey, look at that. We found a unique tomahawk, right? Great. Um, and some wormhide booties. They could maybe be wormhide booties. But, that right there is... this. Like I've said before, this is my favorite place to magic find every single difficulty because you can cheese him, and when you're cheesing him like that, it gives you time to be, to be new and slow at the game and shift your good gear in and everything like that to make sure you have your magic find set when you get the kill, blah, 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 right? Um, so that kind of takes care of your basics. And I want, I'll show a really quick summary of like what my character has right now, you know. This is just some basic gear that's focusing on resistances, faster cast rate, and uh, magic find. Right, and plus the skills. 
That's all this gear is. I look for those things on this gear. In terms of charms, I look for resistances and magic find and life. And I guess some faster recovery as well. <laughs> but pretty much all I'm, all I'm looking for. Hodo basic gear. I mean, I have Taurash's Lidless Eye. That could be basic gear, right? This is like my elite character, I would say, um, for a, a newer player, right? This is an elite setup for a newer player. You've got your Trex. You've got your... Um, I probably don't need a Raven there. I could put an SOJ, honestly. Uh, you've got your, you know, Viper Magi and your Shaco, your Tals, Ami, and Belt. Like, this is a pretty good setup right here for that character. Um, now, this character farms those areas decently well, but she's going to struggle going very, very far and farming efficiently in a lot of later areas. So... Let us shift over to now the slightly more advanced match find. And while I hop into this character, I want to note a couple things. The first one is once you start getting a little stronger, you can start doing things like adjusting the player settings. This is if you're on single player. On Battle.net, you would just be joining games with other players. And if those players are in your party and nearby, you're going to get even more drops. But what it does when you're adjusting the player's count, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I, it's setting the game as if there are that many unpartied players in the game. I say unpartied because, once again, the partied versus unpartied players has a factor in the formula for how many drops there are. Now, what's important to note is as you increase players, you're increasing the difficulty, the experience game, the quantity of items dropped, not the quality though. I'm not going to have any drops that are going to boost my, you know, I could be players 128, that's not a thing, but that would never increase my magic find ability there, right? This is the opposite of magic find. This is increasing how many drops are dropping, but it only goes to a degree. So the way that Diablo works, and there'll be more discussion on this later, but the way that Diablo works is it has a no drop roll. So when it's rolling to see how many items are dropping, it has a chance for there to be no drop. So this is why when, when you're in normal players one, killing some monsters, you don't find as many items because it rolls no drop quite a lot. As you increase the player numbers, the chance for no drop goes down. So you're going to start getting more drops and more drops and more drops. And eventually you get to that point where no drop is pretty much gone or gone and so you're going to get at least guaranteed five items or whatever it is from a monster right because that no drop chance is now gone so for monsters like mephisto and dark boss monsters act boss monsters bl players three is the magic number at players three your no drop chance god i can't talk right now your no drop chance is basically non-existent, okay? That's not that much of an increase in difficulty, but that is going to be, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but you're going to get a guaranteed lot more drops. So if you can work your way to players three, and once again, when you're farming somebody like Mephisto, who you can literally just stand across the river, the moat and cheese, you could kill him on whatever difficulty, if you can kill on players three, you're going to be increasing your chances a lot for boss monsters, act boss monsters. Um, it's also going to be increasing chances, of course, for if you want to farm in other areas. But the main thing that I would say is your big use there is players three for those boss monsters. Monsters. Item quantities go up at players one, three, five, and seven. So players 2, 4, 6, and 8 will only increase difficulty and experience and all of that stuff. Okay, but they're not going to be increasing your actual quantity of items dropped. Just a heads up. It's on every odd. So that's why you'll see people doing 5, players 3, right? Not a lot of like players 4 and stuff. Um, okay, so now we're in hell, right? Now we're in hell. We're starting to get a lot beefier. We've done... Our Endario runs for a little while. We found a Shaco. We found a Jeeds. Also note that people like Endario drops a lot of like rings and Amis. So we got an SOJ and a Raven. And we got ourselves a 
Mara's and you know, we're, we're feeling good, right? Feeling good. Um, and now you say, I'm ready to move up to the next level of gear, right? Now I'm ready to find Tao's armor. I'm ready to find Death Fathom, right? I want to go find some Shadow Dancers. I want to get myself Griffin's Eye. You know, there are a lot of GG items um, that exist in this game. And a lot of these ones like this aren't going to exist in uh, uh, from like Indario's table or even Mephisto's table. So this puts you in, in some predicaments of where am I farming? Okay. And we're going to kind of run through a variety of the areas here. And I'm actually going to bring up to not to see. Yeah. I'm actually going to bring up um, some area levels right here. If I can find it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So, this, let me, let me share this. Let me share this over. Properties. Whoa, that is huge. Okay. And perfect. I guess we can make it a little bigger and put it like that. Right. So this is where I'm going to be. This is act normal nightmare hell level name. So really we're just looking at this and that essentially because we're looking in hell. Okay. So you're going to see Right now, if you want to find items like Griffins, Windforce, Death Fathom, really, really high-level items that are, you know, and, and some like Tal Rash's armor are going to be a little lower, but, but these sorts of items, you're going to be looking for areas that have this 85 here because it has to be in these 85 areas for you to really go find those, okay? This is going to allow for minions and their... Uh, the boss monsters, their minions, their um, champions in there as well, right? All of that stuff is going to be uh, how you find these GG items. So places like the pit, okay? We can go out right here. Pit is a great, great place. Level 85 area. Note that there's a lot of cold immunes, right? So if I'm down here, I'm I'm generally not killing any any regular monsters. I'm killing boss monsters and groups like that, right? I'm looking for monsters that are boss groups. Looks like I kind of can kill these areas. Let me go ahead and do this just so I'm not a complete fool. I didn't realize Infinity broke some immunities down here. That's nice. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking for these boss groups like this. And boom, you can already see we have found a Monarch Shield. Right? Lots of people love Monarch Shields. That's a highly desired item. A lot of people in my chat always say, Oh, I need to find a Monarch Shield. Where should I go, Mr. Llama? Well, there you go. We just found a, we just found one right there. Right? So I'm looking for the boss and the ones that say Demon Minion underneath. And this is where I'm going to find a lot of really GG items. I can go all the way over here, find more, right? It's just fantastic. So each of these spots, each of these 85 areas is going to be ideal. And there's a level two as well. Each of these areas is going to, is going to be ideal for finding any item in the game. I really did not think my infinity broke as many of these immunities as it does. I really didn't think so. Let's just go home. Okay, so back to our list. Back to our list. Angelus. Pit's great. Pit level two is great. Crypt? Nope. 
only 83. Mausoleum, which is right next door, 85. Why? Who knows? But that works. So you go to the Cold Plains, go into your uh, burial grounds, and go to the mausoleum. The towers, 78, 75 through 79. Not going to be finding those GG items. But once again, you can find runes here. And you can find up to low rune, I think, from the Countess. I believe that is the rune that she can drop. I think it's up to Ist rune for her special drop and low rune for her drop drop. But you can find a lot of runes down here, right? Continuing on, there's not a lot of other places in Act 1. Mumu Farm is a 81, level 81 area, and Zod rune is a level 81 drop. So, this is something that you want to note, right? This means, like I said, let me take a step back. Zodrun will drop in from any monster level 81 or up. Mumu Farms is a level 81 area, which means the monsters at Mumu Farm, all of the cows, are at least 81 here. Okay, that's what this is saying. All the cows, and it's not exactly saying it this way, but all of the cows can drop that. So when you're in somewhere like the Tower Sarah level 5, only boss group monsters, such as her minions, are going to be able to drop Zod rune. But all the other monsters won't, right? But at the cow level, any monster at the cow level can drop a Zod rune. So this is a great place to go rune farming, especially if you want to get that Zod, a fantastic place for that. Moving forward, getting to Act 2, we're hitting a lot of that same garbage, blah, blah, blah. Nothing fantastic to farm yet. Nothing fantastic to farm yet. If you want to farm the Maggot Lair level 3, be my guest. I don't think I've ever met anybody who wants to uh, do that. What about Champ Pack Cow King? Yes. So Champ Packs and the, and the unique packs and the cows will be like level 84, right? Champ Packs level 83. They can also drop Zod, right? It's 81 and up. But, boom, Ancient Tunnels. This is, and you guys have probably seen me farm this place, um, a fantastic place. So let's first kind of remember, what did we see in the pits there? We saw a lot of cold immunes, which my infinity was able to break. Cold immunes, light immunes, and fire immunes. We actually saw all three immunities down there. So if you don't have infinity, it's probably going to be a little tough. Or if you're not a, you know, zeal or a uh, barbarian or hammered in right, you need to have something down there that's going to be able to kill all three immunities in some way when we move ourselves over here though to the ancient tunnels we're going to see this area is one of my favorite areas for a cold sorceress because you don't have cold immunes with the court of course the exception of a boss group that rolls for cold immunes right you have immune to magic so if you're a hammered in you probably hate this area you have more immune to magics. Fresh you have immune meat. to poison. Less than three having a strange day. Glad to come back to this channel to chill out here. Hey, Milk. Hope you're having a good one. You have guaranteed chest and boss group right there at the very least. You generally get about five to six boss groups here, if not more. And same with the pits. You're going to get a lot of boss groups. You can get up to like eight. You'll have immune to fires, but you don't see immune to cold and for that reason this is one of the best places to farm for a cold sorceress or just a cold character overall okay so i love the ancient tunnels i've always loved the ancient tunnels um fantastic Moving forward taurasha's tombs uh, i mean you'll have chest in them if you want to go pop the chest not that great Durial, not very good for farming. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, one more thing I should probably note is you can quest bug Endarial by killing Endarial. As soon as you kill Endarial, just take ATP back to town, whether it's yours, your friends, the one that appears, doesn't matter. Take a TP back to town, and before leaving the game, just go to Warov and go east. If you do that, it will what's called quest bug and Dario, which means she will drop better items every time you kill her. 
because the first time that you kill a monster, when you get this quest that says quest completed, the first time you kill an act boss, you actually get a better drop than if you kill it like when you already have the quest completed. So you can glitch in Dariel to basically always give you the better drop. So she that's why she's also one of the better places to farm. A lot of times quest bugged in Dariel is better than a lot of other heroes or uh, bosses for giving you an item. Anyways, off of that, back to our list. Back to our list. And people will argue nonstop about, you have to do it exactly this way and this. Just ignore them. All you have to do is go back through your TP, talk to Warav. You can even go talk to Akara first. It's fine. Just don't exit the game before talking to Warav and heading east. That's the important thing. Don't leave the game. Um, okay, back to our list here. So, Act 2, really not a lot of great places beyond that. I You can farm the Arcan Sanctuary. Obviously, you're going for, like, keys or something, right? Uh, and it's okay. And ghosts have an okay chance of dropping runes. Um, but the, it is an area level 79. Be aware of that, right? Act 3, you're probably not farming any of this stuff. If you want to farm... Is possible. You can quest bug any character, any boss in the game, but it's a lot harder. You can't do it all in single player. And online, it's like more complicated setups for the later ones and stuff. Or you have to like have somebody else do it and you're in town and get the quest. And I don't know. I haven't bugged the, the, the other ones. And I think you have to do it every time or I'm not sure exactly. But uh, that would be something you can look into further. So... Act three, right? We've we've talked about lower cursed runs, right? Which is just running around there, popping the chest, hoping to find. Um, you're not gonna find any unique items there, but this is great for the runes. But what you will start to see when you get here is we're gonna skip through some of these things, and bam, sewers, right? Sewers level two is very small, but you could go farm the sewers there. Even even up there, it's a uh, level eighty four. Um, but you'll start seeing people farm the temples right here in the Curris Causeway. So you can farm the Forgotten Temple, right? And then you can farm the Ruined Fane, the Disused Reliquary. All of these temples can be uh, great places to farm. Okay. So Ruined Temple is going to be level 84. And you're going to have to deal with Cold Immunes. Guaranteed boss there if you want it. Cold and I guess a uh, fire moon for there. Right. Can be an okay place if you want to just be killing some stuff. Um, pop. You can pop the other temples. Right. Uh, where's my other temples? There we go. Disused Fane right there. That's a. Um, no! <laughs> oh, he died. That is also a level 84. Man, that was sad. Sorry, Golzar, you got uber poisoned. No. When does this become worthwhile to MF? This becomes worth worthwhile to MF once you have basically farmed out of and Daryl and Mephisto. So when I say farmed out of, I mean you can go to a place that I uh, that's called Silo's Pen. This is what I use. It's not the best drop calculator out there. There's better ones, but it's good enough. And you can literally just say, here's how much magic find I have, right? 200%. This is what I'm looking for. Bosses that drop Oculus or, you know, whatever it is that you want to find, right? Wind Force. Is there a boss in Nightmare? No, there's not. What bosses in Hell will drop it? Well, Bale, Nilithak, right, not a lot. Not even Diablo will drop a wind force. Okay. So come here and kind of build towards that ideal setup, which I which I said was kind of that last one. And this is where I'm not gonna go through every ideal piece ever um, of gear, but I'm just gonna give you general ideas of what can be good to to go for, right? Such as a shake go and things like that, right? All of those items, uh, and I even have a TC list. 
Here is a list of items and you can see the Q level and the TC treasure class and Q level of every item in the game. So you can sit there and you can say, what is a Harlequin Crest? Q level 69. Can Mephisto drop that? Yes. Easy. You know, like you just look up that sort of stuff. What is an Oculus? Q level 50. Oh, great. Nightmare Mephisto can drop Oculus. You know, what it, you just, you can just go through every item and just see, what about a Death's Fathom? Can I see, get that? Nope, Q level 81. That's going to be a little harder to, to drop. Dimensional Shard, Q level 85, which is what a Death Fathom is. So that's not going to be until those high level areas, right? Just things like that. And once again, that is a TC 87. So I have to find monsters that can that are Q level 85 or, or monster level 85 or higher that also can drop TC87s or higher. And that's why you start that's where you really start limiting what you can drop. Okay. Um, but going back to this guide, uh, right, so we get to we get to act three here, and there's a lot of these areas that you can go in and farm. And you're gonna have cold immunes, you're gonna have lightning immunes. Uh, and you might even have some fire immunes within there. So once again, these are ones that you're going to have to go in and kind of figure out what is down there. What sort of monsters can I fight? But you can get your level 80, your area level 85, which can drop a lot of gear. These aren't my most preferred areas to farm, by the way. But they are areas that are close by and you can farm. Okay. Um, Durance, once again, we've talked about Durance of Hate as an area to go farm for Mephisto. Fantastic, right? Just fantastic. Moving on to Act 4, River of Flame. Chaos Sanctum. Chaos Sanctuary, right? These are your two 85s there. And River of Flame is actually a pretty good place to farm. It's actually a pretty good place to farm. You can get a lot of uh not cold immune bosses out here as well so i do like the river of flame as an area to farm out on a bliss source sometimes hey templar coat look at that see the efforts of magic finding that's a great one and then of course the Chaos Sanctuary is fantastic. One of the best places for magic finding and rune finding. But with that, you have to be aware that this is a very dangerous area. And this is a tough area. So if you're a casual gamer who isn't geared up, stacked out, this might be a little bit difficult. And this is where I'd say maybe go back to farming, you know, ancient tunnels. Go back and farm the mausoleum. Go back and farm Mephisto a little more. Whatever it is, until you really start to stack your gear a little bit better, then you can come back and farm the Chaos Sanctuary. Because your kill speed might just be too slow. Additionally, you're going to have cold immunes, light immunes, fire immunes within the area. And you have to be able to deal with all those immunities as well. So one of the best characters for the Chaos Sanctuary is the Hammerden. One of the best characters. Um... And then going back to our list, right? We can get to Act 5 now. Uh, Shank and Eldritch, Cold Immunes. So that can be a great place. That was Silo's pen was the one that's going to uh, give you the calculations. Um, but you can just look up D2 drop calculators, right? You can have a look around there. So Shank and Eldritch can be great places to just get quick, easy drops. Pindle is a fantastic, fantastic place to get drops, right? So this is after you've saved Anya. And an important thing to note is don't get the waypoint. If you get the waypoint in the halls of the pain, is that which one it is? Yeah. If you get the, the waypoint in halls of pain, you're going to be screwed. Just come over here. Pindle's always in that same spot. And Pindle will always drop two items for you so this is the beauty of pindle is it doesn't matter what the player setting is it, you can be players one pindle will always drop you two items no matter what guaranteed no more no less 
what the player setting changes is what the rest of monsters around him will drop, right? So you're increasing the quantity of his minions to drop stuff if you would like. Now, going back to our list here, we have uh, Nilithax Temple. So that's an area level 83, right? Which is why you get the issue of not being able to drop Tyrael's Might, Arachnid Mesh, or Azurath Blade from Pindle, nor his minions, because they are not going to be able to reach the Q level of those items. Even with their uniqueness, that's only 86. They need to be 87. Okay. Right. We can go back here and we can say Tyrael's Might, Q level 87. Sacred Armor, Q level 85. Templar's Might, Q level 82. So you can drop a Templar's Might there, but you cannot drop a Tyrael's Might. Azurath, Q level 87. Arachnid Mesh, Q level 87. And these are the only Q level 87s in the game. So these are the three items that cannot be dropped by Pindle. Okay. Back to our guides here. Um, I see people sometimes farming the Infernal Pit, the Abaddon, the Pit of Atra whatever garbage, right? I sometimes see people farming these. Uh... I've, I've never been a, a fan of them, and, and, I, and you can see there from the level. Let's see if we can go find it real fast. There you go. These things, Abaddon. Right. One, the density was never fantastic in my mind. Additionally, the area level isn't great. Um... But it's kind of like a fun area, I guess, you know, and I, I've seen people, I've seen different streamers and stuff farm it. That's how witches do a lot of damage. Okay. Abaddon has a super chest. So if you're, if you're into that thing, you can get your super chest. Nope, take me to Herogoth. Um, so some people like farming for areas that have super chest, which is fine. You know, super chest can uh, can drop a lot of uniques and stuff. But, a lot of items. But, once again, that's an area level 81. So what you're going to be able to find in there is limited. And that still covers a lot of items. I don't want you guys to think that level 81 doesn't cover a lot of items i'm just saying if you want to gear up to griffins you know death fathom to giant threshers and you know storm spire i don't know i really want that but whatever storm spire and you know any any of those wind force those items grandfather you're not getting those in this area but you can get zod rune there and any rune below that you, you have your super chest. You can get, um, you know, tons of, tons of great items. I mean, once again, look for anything Q level 84 and below. And it can be dropped in that area. Wow. All of these items can be there. All of these items can be there. Storm Shield can be there. Alma Negra can be there. Uh, you know, Gladiator's Bane can't be there. Um, but... There's a lot. Hellrat can be there. There's a lot of items that can drop in these areas that are really good items. They're just not the top elite items. Okay. Are amulets listing, missing from this list? Which one? This one? I mean, this is a list of TC. So if you want to go like the rising high lords... I guess they don't have them. Because it's list I guess it's T C. So amulets are T C one or zero. They might not even have it T C technically. So and that's why because an amulet can drop anywhere in the game. So it's all just based on the level, right? 
And I guess they just don't have the uh, those listed because they're not under a TC technically. So yes, this list might not have amulets. Because once again, where do you put it? It doesn't have a TC there. Um, okay, and then going back, last place. Yes, you can drop a tally main normal cow. Uh, the last piece here is World Stone Keep all the way through Bale's Chamber is 85+. plus. So TC is the treasure class. I level is the items level, essentially, or Q level is the the quality it's the level of the item based on the monster in the area so they're they're separate things tc is whether or not a sacred armor can drop i level or q level is if that can roll once that item has dropped essentially like i said we will have a whole discussion on that later for right now i just want to get through the magic finding piece okay um so that kind of covers areas that we're farming, right? And we can do a really brief overview again. Black Marsh for some Countess runs early, and Dariel, Mephisto, and then, you know, you'll do your bales for levels and a little bit of MF there. Nightmare. Black Marsh, if you want some more runes to level up your rune words a little bit and get your gear a little bit higher. Mef and Dariel starts adding some things. Make sure to Q bugger, quest bugger. Mephisto and Nightmare is one of the best upgrades to a number of items that can drop. Highly, highly recommend going there to get yourself geared for that end game content or strong enough to go into hell and do decent in hell, right? Lots of items can drop there that you can use and get your res to pretty much max and your skills up and everything like that. Um, hell mode, now you're starting to come in here. We're looking at Quest Bugged and Dariel starts dropping a lot of things, especially a lot of ring Amis, right, are very good there. Um, and then Mephisto again. Those are the two areas. At that point, when you are ready to level up your magic finding, you're going to start looking at, at ancient tunnels, right? And I'm saying probably when you're like level 80 something, right? You could probably start in your late 70s if you want. Start looking at your ancient tunnels, start looking at your mausoleum, start looking at the pit, start looking at doing some of the disused fane and reliquary and whatever stuff all that is in, in the upper Kuras um, and the Kuras Causeway and stuff. Start looking at doing the Travancle. Then when you get even stronger, start looking at the Chaos Sanctuary, start looking at doing throne uh, or just even Worldstone Keep runs, right? Let me make sure my player's one just so I don't die here. But, you know, just in my area right here, I get one boss, two boss, three boss, sometimes four and five bosses, and every now and then I have a boss down here. So just within those small areas, I think shadow effects. Appreciate that. Just in those small areas right there, in this small area, a lot of times you have to go a little bit further to get more bosses. I kind of got lucky. Hey, there's another one, right? You can get... All right. I'm not going to die for a grand charm. What do I have in here? Oh, a circlet. Eh, not bad. Um, you know, just because for, for that stuff... I can get more bosses in those areas, and that's what I'm looking for, right, when I'm clearing those. You can do full clears if you want, but you're going to be getting a lot of the better item drops when you're killing those unique boss groups and stuff um, because you're upgrading the levels that they are, right? So it's just, uh, it increases the chance, right? If I want to find griffins, a normal white monster in the Throne of Destruction or in the Worldstone Keep isn't going to drop that. Okay. Hey, somebody told me you sound like an owl. Who? Who, me? Who? Who? Who that? Who? Um, thanks, Guck. So, that kind of concludes that piece. That kind of concludes that piece of it. Now, let's start looking at some itemization of it, right? Because this is, this is a, a very important part of, of magic finding. Let me see if there's where I've put, did I trash all my stuff or did I put it in here? I think I put it in here. 
Yeah. Okay, so early ways to get magic find. Because you're saying, that's great, Mr. Llama. I'm at Nightmare and Nightmare Mephisto. I don't have any magic find. What do I do? Tell me, Mr. Llama. I see you have Shaco and you got your topaz in it and you've got, you know, your forested monarch shield and all these things that are just blah way too rich for my blood i can't even find a monarch shield let alone the istruins to to put in it what do i do well you go for the cheat build because we right now are just trying to get the early magic find that we have over here right we are just trying to get the early once again from zero to 200 is even more than 200 to 1,000. So the first 200% magic find is more effective than the next 800%. Okay? So I'm just trying to get you that first 200%. How do we do it? We do it in the cheapest, easiest ways possible. Shabam! I got a three open socket helm. I put three topaz in it. And I now have 72 magic find at the cost of a helmet, which isn't a clutch crucial piece, right? I'm not having to sacrifice my armor for that or, or, or something, you know, it's a helmet. Eh, okay, whatever. Easy, easy 72 right there. What's something else I could do? Bam, a rhyme shield. Shale F. Can you find Shale F? I hope you can. You can go run Nightmare uh, Countess runs to get yourself the Shale rune. Might take you 8, 10 runs, whatever. Go get your Shale F. Great. Pop those puppies in a bone shield. You've got yourself 25% more MF. This is if you don't have Millibrega. Oh, wait. That's on my shared. Uh, 60. Where did I put my Millibrega? There it is. Millibrega's Orb. Really low level item. Very basic. And this is one of those that I can have on my swap. So I can be killing with my spirit or whatever it is. Swap my weapon right before I kill and I get 20% more magic find. Simple as that. Right. Really easy item to have right there. What else did we talk about before? We talked about... Uh, where is it? Tank Rids. This is one of the cheapest sets ever. I get from having two pieces, right? This is a garbage set. But from having two pieces, I get 30% faster run walk. Super helpful. And I get 78% magic find. This is the goat of magic finding early set pieces. 78%. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Absolutely huge, right? Easy. That's the easiest 78% you've ever seen in your life. You probably have thrown these things away a hundred times. Okay. You're probably throwing these away all the time. What else do we talk about? Saigons. I'm getting some cold reds. I'm getting some increased attack speed, some fire res, some life. And bam, I'm getting 50% magic find from wearing three Saigon's pieces with cold res, faster run walk, lightning res, or, or fire res, life, and some strength. Bang. Easy. Also gives me some life steal, defense, attack rating. Yeah, that's pretty solid. That ain't too shabby. That ain't too shabby at all, right? You still use two-piece tankard. You should. It's fantastic. I consider using two-piece tankard sometimes. And I'm running towels and war traps. Like, it's amazing. Right? What else? We can run angelics if we want to run for that stuff. Um, we already went over the set items. Right? And we, we already went through those pieces. But let's look at some other simple options. Alibaba. And you don't have to have the ist ist in the Alibaba, right? Let's pretend like you have one without ist ist and you just have 98% or whatever your level is. If you're level 70, 70% 70 magic find. What do I do? I put this on my offhand. 
I kill with this, kill with this. At the end, I swap here. I've got this here. I've got my Rhyme Shield or my Millabregas over here. I've just added myself another 100 Magic Find. Super easy. And you can get it from Nightmare and Dario. That's right. Really easy piece to find early on. What else can be good? What else can be good? Let's go to Gold Dagger. Where is it? There it is. Gold Dagger. 100% Magic Find. That was easy. Same idea. I put it on my offhand. Right? Kill, switch. Easy. And this is also required level four. And you're gonna you can find this in, you know, Cold Plains. It's called Bishi Bosh, you can find it, I'm pretty sure. If not Bishi, you can find it from Cold Crow at least. Right? The higher MF better. Yes. But you want to have, once again, kill speed with it. So I could go up to 1167% magic find, but if my kill speed is half of what it would be at 700 MF, 600 MF, then I am not helping myself at all. Okay. Now, what else is super easy? Where's my belts? 23. Uh, there it is. Gold wrap. 30% MF. Right there on a belt. Easy. Easy. Let's swap that over there. Right. Like, there are so many instances of very simple wealth armor, which I don't think I've made on this character. Right. Actually, have I made it? I might have it somewhere here. I don't know why I'm looking at Toothrow like that's a thing. Uh, wealth, treachery. Maybe it's here. That could be made into one right there. Help me! How did you become Doesn't so attractive? Like you are essentially the male version of the female. Streamers who play League with their tits hanging out, and wow. I'm okay with that. Wow. Mr. Llama Love. <laughs> Alright, I might not have a wealth here. Um, Lemco tier in a body armor. 100% magic find. 100% magic find. Easy as that. Or, get yourself a Scolders, which once again, based on your character level, Right now at level 98, 122% magic find. Chansey's gloves, 40% magic find. These are chain gloves. You know where you can find chain gloves? Well, if I really want to know, I just come here. Chansey's, chance guards, <laughs> Chansey's. Q level 20. Chain gloves, Q level 12. Okay. That was easy. Right? Like, super easy to find this. Super easy to find yourself some chance cards. What else is easy? Rings. Uh, Nagel. Boom. 30%. 30%. Uh, that one. Find yourself some other rings that have faster cast rate and mana and light. You know, these things are a little harder. But your Nagel rings, God, I, you know, you drop them all the time. Easy magic find. Any and every bit that you can get all the way to putting three freaking Topaz into a helmet is worth it. Right? And look here. You get it as well for an armor. I used to have a four open socket armor that had four perfect topaz in it. It was the, I, that was what this character first wore. Her magic finding gear when I was starting out and I was running my Hell Mephistos because I could cheese them. And so I didn't need to be good with a lot of good gear and then survivable. I just needed to get to Mephisto. I had this helmet a armor with four perfect uh, P-gems in it, right? 
a Rhyme Shield for resistances, can't be frozen, and of course, more magic find. And I think like an Alibaba. And that was plenty. And then, you know, probably some other mixed sources here and there. But like, I was running just like gold wrap, rhyme, these MF things. And then I got my Shaco and I replaced that. And then I got myself the Scolders and I replaced that on top of my armor. And then later when I got my three piece towel set, I put that on top. And I, you know, I started replacing this on top of my 30% magic find and whatever. But this is, you know, you, you start to find these pieces over time and add them in. Um, but like, it's such a, there, there's such a progression and it's just do what you can, find what you can and, and uh, you know, and, and, and use that to just go magic find. And those are the areas, those are your steps. Nightmare and Dariel, Nightmare Mephisto, get your runes from the Countess to get those rune words to make yourself a wealth or a lore helm or a rhyme shield or a white wand or a black or, you know, any of those, right? Get yourself to Nightmare Mephisto and just work through these sorts of items right there. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, work through those items. Then at Nightmare Mephisto, you start adding on your Shaco, right? You start adding on, maybe you get a Tal's Ami. You start adding on a Tal's Belt for sure. That's an easy one to find. You start, you know, you add, you level these things up a little bit. Um, and then once you get to that later point and you're doing Hell Mephisto, you're starting to add in, you can find arachnid mesh there. So it's not magic fine, but this is gonna increase your cast rate, your skills, your your you know speed of killing. Okay, so you put these things on and then you start venturing out into getting these sorts of items, right? Collecting enough ist so that you can have more magic find on your offhand and getting your Tal's armor and getting your war traps and death fathom and, and everything okay so that is kind of your progression and all along the way you want to be getting your magic finding charms right look for your magic finding charms if these are these are the best charms is right here all res magic find those are the best ones you're gonna find um but you know just try and get these hey mana and magic find and Whatever, get yourself, make sure you have a Jeeds. Make sure you have this. It goes up to 40%. Magic find. This is an easy one, and Dariel drops it a lot. Hell and Dariel is a great place to farm for this. Um, go get one. Sorry, Geeds. <laughs> Geeds, fortune. Go get you that. Uh, but, yeah. There's just, there's so many, so many great magic finding options and places. And this is how you take a character from zero to hero, right? This is how you take that character from just nothing to slowly progressing up. And that's just start out with garbage, but farm Mephisto from <laughs> farm Mephisto from a distance <sighs> get yourself meat. players three thank you espresso get yourself players three so you can start getting no drops to go away you get more drops you get better items it all adds up so that runs through uh, the magic finding guide I think pretty well for how do I take a character and get started and that covers a lot of a lot of these items can be used on a lot of characters as well right so if i'm on a hammered in or i'm on an amazon or i'm you know whatever it is um this is still going to apply you're still going to do things like pop a scolders on put chances on put nagels on put you know topaz and shields and blah blah or in armors and helms all those things still apply and are still great ways to do it What's the best place to farm gem shrines? The stony field. 
Stony Field is the best place. Does players' aid effect drops? Yes. It'll make them more plentiful. Yeah. Any questions? Let's field questions from chat around Magic Find. What do you guys got for me? Players one, three, five, and seven. That's right. I have eight character. I have eight items left on this character to find. By the way, she's trying to find every item in the game. Um, did you touch on the benefits of Travancore? What about it? It's a. I mean, it's a good place to farm. But it's not gonna be able to drop everything. <laughs> Look at me see her <laughs> corona as I ask Chris heads. Um. I'm running 1.13 for Pluggy. Why well, can Raf drop or Act and Smash but not Tyrael Smite? Such confuse. Well, we went over that. It's because Arachnid Mesh is Q level 87, but Nilithax Temple is only area level 83. So, Arachnid Mesh, that means Pindle and his minions are level 86 because they're plus 3 from the area. 86 is not 87, thus he cannot drop it. Mephisto, on the other hand, is Act Boss 87. So he can drop level 87 items, but this is only a TC 63. That's the weird thing. Arachnid Mesh has an insanely high Q level, despite being TC 63. And that is the difference. Mephisto can drop tc63s um both of them can drop tc63 but pendle can't drop q level 87 and that is why all right is the stony the best spot for experience shrines as well cold plains is going to be better for experience shrines or blood more any important breakpoints for mf nope it is a linear scale or a uh, exponential with diminishing return scale here. Log root, log, whatever the heck term. Um, what's the MF on switch on the Holy Grail source? Right now, it's 632. But when I swap myself with, you know, like actual MF gear... This is what it usually is if I run like Pindle, 800. Usually a little bit higher than 800 because I'll swap like one more thing. Um, is there a sweet spot for a four open socket thresher? Uh, honestly, rack farming it could be good. No, the, one of the best places would probably be cows. Cows are a great place to just go find bases for items. But once again, you can just go to your area and say, what's a thresher? A thresher's Q level 71. Colossus Volge Q level 64. And then you go look in areas that are around that and just don't run with don't run with magic find if you're looking for f ones because you want to find or white ones because you want to find non-magic ones um how do, do people determine their dimension returns um the files the text files uh did you lower mention that mf lowers the rate of socket items yeah so Magic find is going to lower your rate of whites and grays, right? Because it's increasing the chance of blue and yellow. And so if you're looking for a white monarch shield or socketed monarch shield, don't run MF. Um, let's see. How long should I use the Tarnhelm before doing three perfect topazes? Uh, Tarnhelm is pretty good. Where's my helms? Oh, that's Biggins. Where my tarn at? Join my army Where is it? Again. Is it another one Are over? Are some items easier to jet from jambling? Is Jeed the best place to Joe and jamble? Or should we Joe to a dip there jamble is. NPC? Thanks for driving us some Jude tips on jetting <laughs> unique and jam items. Thanks, Evo. Uh, this is a pretty good item because it does have the plus to skills. But 
you'll note that, and I mean, mine's only a 39%. I can pretty much double my magic find by putting the topaz on for the cost of plus one to skills. So I would say at the point that I am able to start killing all right, I, I would make that switch. Or I can just always have it in my inventory on switch. Generally, if you're only running a Tarnhelm, you don't have a full inventory set of awesome charms. So you can just run with this, you know, right here or whatever, and then you just make your swap. So th this is, they don't sponsor the stream. I just have a lot of their shirts, that's all. Um, did you mention that MF lowers the rate of socket? Yeah, okay, I did that. Logarithmic scale, thank you. How do I know if Q bugged Andy? Uh, if you kill Indariel and she doesn't drop gold, then she's Q bugged. If she drops gold, you did not bug her. Um, are there any items that are easier to farm off classic? Like you could find godly rares and convert to expansion pack. Uh, I'm sure there's some difference. I don't know what it is between classic and LOD. Can I just hop right to Helm F and Cheese or does Nightmare have better odds of certain key gear? Like Nightmare Andy does. Yeah, you're going to have better odds from Nightmare for certain gear. Um, and this is where using Silo's pen and other D2 calculators can be beneficial. You'll just want to look up and see what am I trying to find, and it'll tell you which boss is the most efficient for finding it. Um, usually it's Endariel or um, Mephisto. A lot of times it's also Bale, but you have to remember that a Bale run is like five times slower because you have to kill all the waves. So Bale, he's never actually the fastest for any item because of the time it takes to get to him. Um, anything affect rune drops? No. Rune drops, uh, players, slash players will because you're going to get more items, but Magic Find will not. I'm needed to, I want to play Javelin. What happens when I run out of throwing jabs? I'm adding the word Magic Find so it fits to the topic. Um, if it's white jabs, they'll disappear. If it's other jabs, they'll just break and then you have to go repair them. Uh, where is this sheet? Which one? This one? This one is here, it's Diablo 2, Diablo Wiki. It's in chat. Um, can any monarch get made into a spirit? Any gray one can. Remember, if it's blue with mechanics or whatever, you can't. You can't do it. You can't make rune words out of anything above a gray. Um, <sighs> Fresh thank you, inversion. Dang, llama. I know I'm not here as often as I was before, but I still think you deserve my sub. Appreciate it, bud. Keep on doing. How does it decide if it's magic, unique, or rare? First, it rolls and says, is it unique? And then it checks, and if it says no, it goes, cool. Is it a set? Checks, no. Is it a rare? Checks, no. Is it magic? No. And then it'll roll and be like, is it superior? Is it uh, you know, low quality? Like It'll check through those things after that as well. I forget the exact order of the bottom ones. But that's how it rolls. It rolls from the top down. So it tries for unique first and then goes down from there. Thank you, Nones. Um, does magic find negatively affect Tyrant drops? No. If you have total, 200 total MF, which lowers the, the magic item drop rate, wouldn't it be better your chances of a unique? No, because it's rolling for a unique first. That's why it's always better to have more MF. You're not going to lower your chances by having a higher magic, like look for blue items. Um, some items easier to get from jambling. Uh, you can gamble at any NPC. Um, and I, I would say no. I mean, technically, yes, but that's only if you had like infinite gold right there and the items always appeared. But the time that you have to go through uh, is pretty annoying. Uh, does it matter if I run Mephisto players one or seven? Yes. The quantity of items dropped. Uh, and like I said, at players three, players three is your sweet spot because no, no item is basically gone. No drop is basically gone at that point. So you are finding a lot of items every time you kill Mephisto. And it doesn't take as long. Uh, so higher is just if you can kill them that quick and you want maybe a little experience or whatever it is. Um, 
Quest gives the max power sockets to everything, but if you have phase blade, zero sock, you want to make grief, it's not happening since Q will make it six sockets. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, you would have to find a phase blade that is a low enough eye level that it only rolls up to five, right? Yeah, something like that. Um, 30 30 tri res boots are your defining classic. There you go. What kind of D2 have shared chest? This is Pluggy Mod. Um, have you used Silas Pen on your last eight items? I mean, I can show you guys. Let's do. Let me go to some Silas Pen here and I'll show you guys some like odds of things. Right? So, 1.13. I'm running player seven. And I have 600% magic fine, let's say. I kill it 632. I'm going to look at unique or bosses. Let's let's go to boss monsters for hell because these items I'm looking for are hell. Unique items. And let's go for um, wind force. Sort of a probability. This is the quail, the quest, the quail, <laughs> quest veil. And this is the non-quest veil. And that gives me a 1 in 11,000 chance of getting uh, wind force from bale. No other boss is killing it. So I would have to get away from bosses and go to super uniques. And here we can see if I'm doing stuff like pindle skin, I have a 1 in 18,000 chance of getting my wind force, right? If I'm going to just unique monsters, these are boss monsters or minions in eye level 85 areas, and it's a one in 36,000 chance. So this is why I run around the ancient tunnels, and every time I kill a boss, I have a one in 36,000 chance of getting a wind force, essentially. Um, now let's look at uh what's the what's the archons mang song mang song's lesson i have a one in a hundred and ten thousand chance right from pendle i have a one in fifty five thousand chance and even from a boss, Bale now is a 1 in 33,000 chance. So these are not great odds. <laughs> you will find much better odds on something like Shaco, <laughs> where I have a 1 in 372 chance on my bugged Endariel. This is why you have Shaco, 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 and you've thrown a bunch of Shakos on the ground as well and get rid of them. Because at this point, your chances of getting these kinds of items, even from unique monsters, are, you know, whatever. It's a lot easier to find them um, than it is to find, like, a Mang Song. Okay. So yeah, the lowest chances of my like l remaining items are like one in 15,000 or something. Uh, as I did, Istrun's just found a helm with two open sockets and I have two perfect topazes. It was meant to be. So an easy thing to do is to go to hell and farm Charcy. And you can literally just quit game and come back in and farm her for a helm real fast. And just do this, quit out. Go back in, unless you have an easy map where you can reset her just by exiting town and leaving town. And look for a mechanics or whatever the three open socket version is. She'll have three open socket helms. Might take 15, 20 times or something, but you can get a three open socket helm from her pretty easily. Uh, and that's great for putting, you know, an extra P Topaz in later. When swapping gear for MF, do you have to swap before they spawn? No, just before they die. Just before they die, you have to swap. If you could, would you help design Diablo 4? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I have a ton of MF. It will make rune runs dropless because more... No, it won't change your rune drops one bit. 
yes, I will put a link to all of these sites in my YouTube description. Um, wouldn't four stock monarch be jewelers, not mechanics? Yes, jewelers was the word I was looking for. Uh, dang, XR. Let's see. Green screen or actual backdrop? Green screen. Just slash players affect boss drop rates. Yes. But like I said, players three is pretty much where you're getting with that. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's play monster to have no drop. Good. Yeah. Not great there. Maybe this one has it. Whatever. Uh yeah, just just know that. It's worth to have over two hundred percent if diminishing return caps them there for farming uniques. Um, yeah, totally. So, I mean, like, like I say, if we look at, uh, my graph right here, 200% MF versus 800% MF, I'm nearly doubling at 800, you know? So more is always better as long as you're not ruining your, your kill time too much. Um, that is correct. Uniquely perfect. You can try and get the gamble cube socket, but use it. Have a random chance on that. Where did I farm stuff from my source and nightmare to progress in hell? Mephisto. Go to go cheese Mephisto. Did I ever finish my MF source? This is her. She has eight items left. Um, what's the chance of winning lottery again? The chance of me getting the rest of these items. Uh, I could show you, ooh, let's go here. Tyrael's Might. The chance of finding a Tyrael's Might at my magic find on player 7 was 1 in 383,000. And I think I even did it on players 1. I'm going to be honest. Oh, maybe I didn't just say whatever. Oh no, because it's from a boss. That is from the boss himself. One in three three hundred and eighty-three thousand. From one of his minions, it's a one in sixteen million chance. On players one. On players seven a one in seven million chance. So that's why it takes a while. And even if you go to bosses and you're gonna kill Bale, it's a one in 121,000 chance. 121,000 Bale kills. It takes like four, 5,000, 4,000 Bale kills to get to 99 from 98. You know how many 99s you could get running for this item? It's insane. So that's why that gets a prominent place in my uh, stash. What rare item types are worth identifying? Uh, so many. I mean, a lot of class specific ones, boots, gloves, belts, rings, ammies, um, uh, uh, weapons. Like honestly, anything, it just depends what you're really looking for and that would be a whole different video. Chance of getting Titans, F Titans on normal bail, probably one in 9,000, I would say. Something around there. Um, how do you auto select how mode? You press H. Where do I farm stuff from my source of Nightmare? Yeah, yeah, you farm Mephisto, MOs. Farm Mephisto. Uh, Nightmare Mephisto. What places do you run in a game for farming if you don't want to save and quit? Um, once again, it depends what stages you're at, but for instance, on this character, I will run Pindle, I will run Bale and Throne, 
I will run Chaos. I will run River of Flame if I want. I'll run Lower Cursed Run, kill Mephisto, kill Indaril, Mausoleum, Ancient Tunnels, uh, Travancore, and then if you want, you could do like Abaddon and those places or, you know, do the disused vein required those areas in here. Girls are getting antsy. Yeah, probably. Are we going to get a pro Thursday on evaluating rares? Yeah, probably. Mm -mm -mm. That's true, uniquely. I found Windforce from Bale 30 minutes ago. Oh, nice. Jealous. Oh, okay. I got you, Trend. Yeah. Um, odds of GG drops increase when the girls sit next to you. I can't deny that. I had Tyrael's might drop, so. Have I found any sexy Jude pelts? Not really. The sexy, kind of sexy rares that I've found are like, that's okay, but it's missing ED, but it's 240s. Um, some nice rings, res, lifesteal, mana, not bad with attack rating. Life, energy, faster cast rate, resistances. This has magic find with life mana and faster cast rate. Uh, faster cast rate, life mana, res, again. Faster recovery, strength, life, res. You know, there's, there's some okay rare items that I've found. Yeah, that's not good. Source skills with res, some mana and stuff, some rings. That's not too shabby. So, nothing game-breakingly good uh, for rares yet. What are the mechanics of getting an F unique? It's either, I mean, it just rolls. So it just rolls to see if it's an F item or not, which is like a one in nine chance or something. Or you can find the max magic finder ring. Are you talking about magic ones, like blue ones that go to 40%? Just identify those rings and they have to, it has to be a high enough level for that mod to roll. If you're talking Nagel rings, I mean, you can find those pretty much anywhere in the game. Um, how good is material, my materials compared to the best materials? Uh, it's very middle of the road. Very middle of the road with a lot of its stats. A little bit on the lower end. Uh, dang, that's awesome, no talent. Materials is definitely a trophy item. What level should I be when I go to Nightmare in Hell? Um, it really just depends when you're comfortable. I would go to Nightmare around 40 to 45 and go to Hell around 70 to 75, personally. If you're a better player, you can go a little earlier. If you don't feel comfortable, though, wait until those times. Uh, recommended MF source skill build, and what's your mercy type and item build? Um, for mercenary, I'm running Ethfort, Kira's Infinity. I'd say cheaper items for him are just going to be like a Durial shell. I think that's... Where did I put my Durials? So not here. There it is. Durial shell is good for him. Guardian Angel is a great armor for him. Gladiator Spain is a great item. Obviously, F if you can, like these ones. Um, weapon Treachery is a great armor for him as well. Right. Where's that Treach? Treachery is a great item for him to have. Uh, weapons insight is a great cheap one for him. Obedience is nice. You know, if you can't get infinity, something like this is nice. Helcothol, Ethfal, that's not that hard to get. Bone hue can be really nice. Reaper's toll, or uh, yeah, Reaper's toll can be a good item. There's a lot of things like that. Andy's helm, Kira's, Crown of Thieves, Gaze, things like that. Uh, sexy pelts, just plain luck. Just plain luck. I mean, you just have to farm in high enough areas and then see. How many perfect items did I get on my MF source? A decent amount, actually. She's got perfect chances. 
She has, I mean, there's a lot of like basic perfect ones here, but the, my best perfect item is a perfect eth rib cracker. Perfect eth up rib cracker. Oh, that's amazing. Have I ever owned an Armageddon amulet? Yeah, at some point. I mean, that was years ago. Eth perfect griffins on ladder. Nice. Um, Perfect set materials, yeah. There was one that got crazy duped many years ago, maybe like 10 years ago. And is this private service, just single player? Why well, Curious on Mercy instead of Gaze Randy's? I like the cannot be frozen because I'm a cold source, but that's that's the reasoning. I just cannot, I, I, I like to let him kill anything that does cold damage. So if they're doing cold damage, then I want him to cannot be frozen. So it's kind of weird logic. I could probably switch something out and make it a little better, but that's what I've done. Uh, and it works for me. Why Thresh over Colossus Volge? Uh, Thresher is better. Just slightly. Um, but they're, they're all pretty close, honestly. Is there a rune drop formula? It gets a rune, checks the level of what can possibly drop, rolls to see if it can drop the, the rune, the highest level rune, and then rolls its way down towards L. Um, so I think like in an area that can drop Zod, it's like one in 5,000 chance of dropping Zod every time a rune drops or something, something like that. 97% of runes you drop or 90% of runes you drop are going to be between like L and Thol. Maybe Ort or something. Yeah, probably like Thol. Maybe like a little higher. Co. Whatever. Um, is he using a farm for skillers or re-roll them? Re-roll them. Well, it's only like a 1 in 11 to 1 in 12 chance if you get a skiller from the Great Marsh or Lorcross Nightmare like around there. It's a pretty decent chance of actually getting a skiller on it. What is the best, best affix slash mod in this game? Too tough to say. Um, favorite Uber's character from Magic Find? I mean, you have to just go with the Paladin, right? You can smite. and I mean, I guess this character can actually kill Uber's decently fast, so maybe it's this character. It's my favorite. Yeah, this needs to be on a Fury Jude. Well, I have to find my Zod rune, Zod it, and put it on a Fury Jude. I know. Um, why Infinity over Obedience? Obedience? Because the way that I run this character is I run her as a Cold Fire. So by having Infinity, it allows me to put one point into Cold Mastery. That means I get eight minus 85% here, minus 82 or 87% from Infinity. I think it's 87. Um, so you stack those. That's 160, 170%. That's enough to cover everything. So I don't need any more Cold Mastery from that. And that save point allows me to put points into Fire. Plus the Infinity is going to, of course, help all of my Fire damage as well. So now I'm doing good uh decent enough blizzard decent enough fire damage and then my infinity is making all of that amplified a lot more and it allows me to clean up a lot of monsters and to farm more areas with and you know break a lot of immunities and stuff that's why have you ever heard of bug saigon shield mm, no i have not yeah the strength core and thresher is lower as well very true. 142 instead of the 210, I think, on a Colossus Vulge, which is horribly high. Um, I can just use it. Oh, there's Cryptic Axe. I like that as well. I can just use uh, a Colossus Vulge on my Mercenary, and he's level 98. I think I can. Oh, he's 209 strength. Even then, I can't. I would have to have something else to boost him. Some sort of plus to strength item. Is way easier to farm them in certain places than rolling? I mean, if you have the... Uh, 
if you have the gems, it's easier to roll them. If you don't have the gems, then yeah, it's easier to farm them. But I could go, you know. Good evening. I don't know how many gems I have right now. Let's put my lemon in away. Yeah, we'll just put it on this page. <sighs> Fresh meat. You know, go here and just see this Necronomist. Thank you so much. 41 life, 18 life. Where's all my perfect? To, uh, hey, there you go. Two rolls and I got it. Like, you can roll these things pretty darn quickly if you have the gems. I want the superior. There we go. Um, did you do declone on your source? Yes. Save his character for long-term hardcore. I mean, hammered in probably still. Their paladins are so good. Uh, favorite rune word? Spirit. Super overpowered. Way too, way too good for how cheap it is. But stealth's probably my favorite, just because I'm a speedrunner. You're running the old Bone Who Fortitude Cure on your Merce and he keeps dying. Any way to keep him alive? You gotta keep teleporting him away and giving him potions. A lot of Merce survivability. Even my Merce in his current state will die very easily if I'm not babysitting him nonstop. Mercenaries are so stupid. Um, what about Shaco's? Come on, YouTube, watch your reaction after I do you my COA. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah, that's why I love where Mercies wear Andy, so they can use the Colossus Vulge. F Colossus Vulge is only 200. It's still crazy. Um, I guess let's go. Yeah, you're right, 200. Like I say, that's still a ton of strength, though. Unicorn item to find was rare. Eth, Dimensional Blade with Cruel Affix, and Max AR per level. Yeah, I had one. It was pretty legit. It was worth a lot. A lot, lot. Yeah, I throw away Monarchs left and right. Sorry. Um, can you do a speedrun for us, please? I speedrun all the time. How does it take to make a source like yours from scratch? Like this? With all the stuff that I have? I mean, this has taken me a couple years almost. 300 plus hours, single player. Multiplayer, I mean, you do this in a few hours. You just go trade around. But not a few hours, you know, but you can do it in a couple months. Just depends how much time you want to put in. Um, why is that dimensional worth a lot? Because you can up it to an F phase blade. Otherwise, phase blades can't spawn as eth. And once you up it to a eth phase blade, it can't break. So basically, you get the free, you don't have to zot it, and you get the free capability of it being ethereal, which boosts its damage up. Then you put, you know, plus to enhance damage, and you get the cruels, the fool's mod, and all that stuff on it. And uh, it can do a lot of damage really good for a zealer, zealer, zealot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, can you quest by Gandhi if you've already done the quest? No. No, you cannot. Can you on POD? Uh, none really. Um, did you do Ubers on this source? Yeah. How is a 2000 game so complex? Bro, go watch Pro Thursdays if you want to see complexities. <laughs> Why aren't you speedrunning? What is this community interaction? Why did you read this question out loud? Ah, oh, crap, I'm sorry. We can go, we can go, like, magic find a little bit while we answer more questions. Now that we've kind of got through the bulk of them, I'll go ahead and say cut on the video. Everybody say bye, YouTube. Thanks for watching out there. And now we will do some Holy Grail.
I apologize for trying to make the Diablo 2 community more inviting and welcoming for new players. I understand that that was against my job and my duties. You have a match point question. Hit me. Circlets can also be great. Always pick up circlets and diadems and all those bad boys. Am I mad to find four to you? We can work out a price. How's that sound? Maybe that'll be my next thing. I, people can pay me to log on to their characters and deck them out. Magic find and then make them better. <laughs> Boom! New business venture. Thanks, Nate. Oh! Hold on. Don't say bye to YouTube yet. We'll, we'll, we'll bye to YouTube in a second. So, with the... We forgot to do the challenge. What the challenge is. Let me... Let me kill this. And then we'll talk. We didn't even do that. Silly. Hi, YouTube. Everybody say hi again. We faked you out. Ha ha. Ha ha. You guys thought we were gone. But we were... We were here all along. We were... We got you. Gotcha. That's right. Killing it. Psych. Them YouTube suckers don't even know what what hit them. Got him. Got him, boys. Okay. Boom. Magic Find Monday. So, our previous Magic Find Monday was find acquire the most poison facets on Battle.net. Um, this one flopped. It didn't do so well. There wasn't as much, everybody sent me messages saying how much they disagreed with find poison facets. <laughs> so, we'll just throw it away, we'll trash it, we'll pretend it didn't exist, and instead, uh, where's my Magic Fun Monday? Diablo Daily. Instead, we're just going to swap it to the next challenge. You found three screws are? Well, you never turned them in. Bro, if you found them, I was like, where are people at? Send me your facets. And people were like, eh. I don't feel like turning them in. So. It wasn't the best challenge. That's fair. The turn-in process might have just been difficult. I think. I think the turn-in process might have just been difficult. If you would still like to turn them in, I will gladly uh, showcase it during the next Magic Find Monday. So you just have to, like I said, get on my Discord and send me a message, and we will work it out over this week, and then next week I will report it. I will gladly do that. But for now, we're going to go back to Magic Finding um, because people seem to like that part a lot more uh, than the just acquire items. So here is the challenge. The challenge this time is going to be finding a list of items. Um, and I tried to kind of throw a mixture on there, right? So the mixture is we're starting out and you have to find six items, as many as you can from this list. If you get Three shaft stops, that doesn't count. You stop at one. It's just you, you cross it off the list when you get it. There are six items. I want to see if anybody will find all six, if somebody will find four of them, whatever it is. Same sort of thing as before. You have to be streaming or recording this. When you find the item, you must type llama in the chat. That's all you got to type. You don't have to put dates or anything like that. Just type llama in the chat. But this is a scavenger hunt for these six items. Get a Twitch clip. Get the local copy, just cut it down into a little short clip, put it on YouTube, whatever. Send that to me. OBS Studio is a fantastically easy way to stream or record it. 
okay? Um, just do this. Can you do it single player? Yes. Single player works, bound net works. No game breaking mods that are changing, you know, the magic find of items and things like that. None of that's allowed. Just vanilla, you can use pluggy or something basic, but nothing crazy like, you know, whatever, beyond stuff. Um, and then submit it through Twitch, email, or Discord. So you can message me here on Twitch. You can send me an email at mrlimasc uh, at gmail.com, or you can join my Discord channel, oh my, oh and you can post goodness. in there. Whenever All you right. say facet, I try to think of faucet jokes. Oh, my God. I could sit here and spout puns. Or I could just repeat the same old watered-down plumber terrible. jokes. Either way. Just awful. It can be really draining. So oh my back God. to MF in the sewers. So they did not get rid of Twitch messaging. They just made it so you have to message me through their like little chat thing. They got rid of the inbox way, but you can still whisper me. So just whisper me with a link to the find of it. Like I say, Twitch clip or YouTube video. Those are the easiest things. Just an easy way that I can have it and pull it up to watch. I don't want to be downloading all these things and converting file types and stuff. So please just do one of those two ways uh, or some sort of easy viewing source. So this is the challenge, right? That's it. Just go through the checklist and shaft stop, which is the armor, of course. Tal's armor, which is an armor. Griffin's helm, which is uh, the helmet. Treks, which are the booties. Sandstorm treks. I can pull those right, right there. Sandstorm trek. Um, Stone of Jordan, and then which is the ring, and then our good old friend Ghost Flame, which is right here, the dagger. Okay. So good luck to all. This is a scavenger hunt for six items before uh next monday so have these things submitted by next monday through any of the sources all right i right, accept rattle cage instead of tells armor uh i mean I'll, I'll i'll try and check for it but if you if you fake me out with it you know i might get scammed all right now say bye to youtube everybody wave bye to top off magic find monday you should talk about how easy it is to find Seraph's him and metal